Hello, my name is Ian McCall and this is a video from the Dermoscopy Made Simple series on benign nevi. Now, benign nevi, they're going to be one of the commonest pigmented lesions you're going to see and certainly the commonest pigmented lesion you're going to put your dermatoscope on. But the thing to note about them is that the dermatoscopic picture changes with time they usually begin as clod-like or globular nevi and they slowly change into lined reticula. Also though, congenital and some dermal nevi may remain clod-like throughout their existence. The other thing is to note growing nevi. They often have a ring of peripheral clods, so the clods are around the outside of the lesion, as do spitz nevi. You can also have combined nevi with different populations of pigmented cells within the same background pattern, for instance, lines reticular, but different colors of lines reticular. Or you can have uh, different structures there, such as uh, blue nevi with a blue structureless area and uh, in amongst clods or lines reticular. I think they're probably the true combined nevi. So let's look at ordinary nevi. Let's make these just a touch smaller. There. Nice one pattern, lines reticular, one color, brown. These are the little openings of hair follicles where the area is clear. That's the picture of a benign reticular nevus. They start though often as a globular pattern like this, um, where you've got packed clods. There's no obvious net like reticular network there peripherally in this either. So these are the two common patterns. They start globular, they evolve into reticular. One pattern, one color, benign. Sometimes nevi, benign nevi can really be quite big. Look at the size of this one. Um, obviously it's in the thigh of a hairy adult. So you wouldn't expect perhaps to see globules and what you're seeing here are lines reticular. Now note that the globular are clod nevi change into lines reticular with age. And this is a normal process and it doesn't merit excision because of change if you happen to be monitoring these nevi. That's a normal accepted change and this is your lines reticular. Also, you've got to watch if you're looking at an area on the face like this. Um, because on the face, you have a pseudo-network. So if we were to look just at the clinical of this, there's the clinical on this boy's face. And then we have a little look at the dermoscopy. And it looks like lying reticular, but these are, this is a pseudo-network. These are the follicle openings. And uh, this is some pigmentation around the follicle openings here. And this isn't a lenticular maligna or the like, this is a pseudo-reticular pattern that you'll see with some nevi on the face in older people. So let's pop back and have a look at the next one. This is just another example of packed globules here or packed clods. Um, we've written this as a dermal nevus could easily, in fact, be a congenital nevus with that, uh, that picture. Sometimes, though, you'll get clods like this within a nevus. There's the clinical. And you get these blown clods scattered here. Looking at the outside here, you're looking to see what other, uh, if there is a, uh, aligned reticular there. Difficult to see. We'll go one more and just have a look around it. Possible, possible there's a bit of aligned retic there, but it's not terribly obvious. You've mainly got these scattered blown clods, some varying size within it. You need to look carefully at, uh, at a lesion like this because there are some melanomas that can look like this. So you'd want to take the history into consideration here as to how long that lesion had been there. 
Now, brown clods usually mean congenital nevus, spitzer, and unus nevus, but they're varying in size and distribution. Consider a melanoma. And if you look at the clods video, you'll see an example there. Clods, though, can also represent a growing lesion. Now, usually, the clods are peripheral in a growing lesion, a growing nevus, used a uniform size. This was one on the breast. Um, varying size of clods here, not all peripheral either, some of them becoming a bit central. Still, I suppose, essentially one pattern and one color, though you can argue there's different colors of brown here, different shades of brown. But uh, this was uh, sampled, and it was a benign nevus. Also note that pigmented lesions in genitalia, breasts, palms and soles, and the ears, they can look atypical, both dermatoscopically and histologically but often are still benign. So, globules as part of a growing nevus. This is the typical picture of an unus nevus. A papillomatous central structure here, and a macular pap to the outer um, area. If you look, it's brown clods that are surrounding it in a papillomatous structure, essentially. So, picture of an unus nevus. A lot of people get worried by these, but with that papillomatous nature, you can be quite assured. Some nevi are just pink. Now, now there's no pigment associated with them at all. And when they are like this, you really rely on vessels to assess whether they're benign or not. Looking at this one, most of the lesions are curved. Most of the vessels, I should say, are curved. There are some uh, looped ones here, though, as well. There may be a serpiginous one uh, here. If you started to see significant dot vessels within this, as well as these other vessels, then you would need to consider uh, a melanotic melanoma uh, in your differential and probably biopsy. But this was uh, the curved vessels of an intradermal nevus. This one, two populations of cells. Um, some combined nevi can have this appearance, as do uh, some congenital nevi. Then this one. This is the clinical. And it's the clinical that's more worrying when you look at it. A darker area here, a pinker area next to it. Um, you're thinking, is this a melanoma, uh, a melanotic melanoma area here? Um, more than one color and structure make this suspicious. So when we look at the dermoscopy, let's have a see if we can enlarge that just a touch. Okay, let's get a look at this. So here, there's a suggestion of some gray dots. I think you can see it in this magnification. Just here and here, there's some gray dots. Um, this, uh, these are lines retic, it's a disrupted uh, network that you're seeing here. Uh, you might think there's a bit of radial uh, streaming or lines uh, uh, peripheral. There's a little bit of lines retic here as well, remnants of lines retic. Then you've got this pale scarred structureless area. A bit of pressure may have occluded the vessels here. You'd want to look carefully at the vessels to see if there's a polymorphous and dot vessels here. Now, in point of fact, there wasn't in this particular uh, lesion. And the uh, when it was all removed for histology, it was a regressing nevus. So, regression, the gray dot. This is the regressed area, the remnants peripherally here. But well worth... Uh, an examination with that clinical picture. Here's another nevus showing <coughs> regression. It looks very gray clinically. And let's look at that clinical again. There it was there. It looks quite gray. And you have a look at it with your dermatoscope. And here you see a lot more in the way of grey dots within this lesion, some remnants of uh, clods here, grey-blue areas within this as well. So this is a, a nevus that's undergoing quite significant regression. 
again, difficult to diagnose that just from looking at this. And with this degree of regression within a nevus, it's well worth excising it and getting it looked at histologically. Here's another type of regression you're going to see. It's called a halo nevus. There's the clinical there. There's the loss of pigmentation roundabout. And gradually, this will be removed as well. This is the dermatoscopic area here, the white area, the pale area surrounding it is whiter than normal skin color, indicating the melanocytes have been taken out. So halo nevus, um, if one, doesn't mean anything. If you get a series of them, it may be presaging or preceding uh, vitiligo. Here's another unusual one, white background, uh, nevus within it. But this is worrisome. Look at this here, it looks like uh, lines radial peripheral. Um, and what's happening here is you've got a recurrent nevus within a scar. This has been shaved, but shaved inadequately. And the nevus is recurring, but when they recur, they get features that are quite worrying. And histologically, they can be just as worrying. So the pathologist needs to know what, was, uh, what the original pathology was of the lesion that was taken out in the first place. If there had been extension of that pigmentation beyond the confines of the scar, then that's a worrisome sign. That makes you think you've got a melanoma within the, uh, the uh, shaved, previously shaved area. And inadequate shaved biopsies can cause this situation to arise. So if you're going to do a biopsy of a granted lesion, make sure that it uh, can be adequately taken out by a saucerization type shave rather than a very superficial one. This is in my books as a recurrent nevus as well, but I must admit, clinically looking at it, um, it uh, I was thinking it was a nevus spilus, but it doesn't really have that background pigmentation that you see in a nevus spilus. Uh, but anyway, I put it in. Sometimes if things are shaved, they can come back in this sort of pattern as well. Here, a nevus with two populations of cells. Now, this had been very stable like this and had grown like this for many years. Um, and if you look at this, it's lines reticular in both halves. And we go there. But you can see how dark these lines reticular are. These are sort of openings, I think, of hair follicles. And you've got a much lighter, but still lines reticular here. Um, so there's two populations of benign nevus cells sometimes called a half-and-half half nevus, but with the same background uh, structure of lines reticular. That's the clinical. Certainly quite, uh, quite an interesting lesion. And lastly, this one, from the groin of a 10-year-old. <laughs> you really know it's a 10-year-old. You get worried by something that looks like that. Um, and this had been changing. And when you look at it, you've got mixed globular and a structureless, blue-black structureless area. The packed clods, even though they're varying size here, suggest that this, there is a compound nevus here. But, uh, and, and point of fact, that's what it turned out to be. This was uh, excised and looked at. But varying size clods and structureless are benign compound nevus. It would be a brave man that would, uh, would leave, leave that lesion without it being sampled. So, our benign nevi can look quite funny at times. Sometimes they can look like melanoma, but the vast majority you're going to look at are going to be like the ones we looked at right at the very beginning. These two here, the simple line retic, developing from the original globular or clod-like uh, nevus. So nevi change with time and with age. Remember that. But the vast majority are going to be one pattern, one color, one pattern, one color, and therefore benign. So that's a quick look through Nevi. Put your dermatoscope on as many as you can so that you get an overview of what uh, benign Nevi look like. We're going to go on and look at dysplastic Nevi, blue Nevi, and uh, the Reed and Spitz Nevi later, and the acral Nevis. But this is just a quick overview of uh, what we term benign nevi. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you very much.